Okay, so I have to get some more parts out here and uh, little buddy, I think we can fix this. Got some parts right here. Yeah. They're coming to get you, Barbara. This week, it's all hands on deck to get Tony's 70 Challenger into the paint booth. The crew unites in a mutiny against Mark, and Will makes a promise that he may not be able to keep. We're coming back on the air. So today's like every other morning. I come in a little bit early, clock in, kind of see where we're at for the day, kind of make my plans. Then I go up and I meet with Mark every morning for like five to 10 minutes. What's happening, boss? Coming to the Iceman for some instructions. It's the normal, what's the plan? Coming to the ice pick to find out what's going on. Did you see these by the way? What are they? Graveyard yeah. cars. Slot cars. Normally it's fairly easy talking to Mark, but the problem this time is the camera guys in there. If the camera guys are in there, you're gonna have a good 30 seconds to try to get some information and then build your week out of that. What's the plan? Cindy D'Agostino, whose generosity amazes me staying with Tony, has a 1970 Dodge Challenger 440 automatic air conditioning plum crazy car here. It's the one that the Dream Maker made happen for her. I've been getting a lot of phone calls from Sandwich Man. That there, that there, a car painted there, that there. Because he's that there. I mean, I don't even words out here in order. Okay. One of his big goals is to make sure we get Tony's car primed, blocked out in the booth and painted. That was kind of already something we've been planning on doing. So that's really no problem to get that done this week. So if calls you don't answer either, all right? Because he's just sniffing around about that car. But if he can't get hold of me sooner or later, he's going to do the show. He did it last year. He's going right. to do it this year. I want to be ahead of the curve. All that body work, all the first prime, the second prime are done. Okay. I want you to get the final primer done. Okay. I want you to block it out, clean it up, blow it out, get everything ready to paint and get it in the booth. Oh, oh that's easy. It needs to be painted this week. Yeah, that's a good thing. And then just then walk away. away. The bad thing is I can't have Will do it. Yeah, I'm gonna paint the car. That's it, that's the big one. So I'm not painting this car? I'm a better painter. He, he just can't do it anymore. So the option of him doing it is not even an option. I want to make sure this car is right and there's no excuses to it. So I'm going to end up painting it myself. But to do that, because Will's kind of a, one of those guys that likes to slide in behind my back, not like that, but I mean, like, can you use that or? No. Is it the yeah. or the uh, Both. So I can't That's not, no. Mm. Nope. Let me just regroup. Whew, big hit to have to take this early. Sensors. This is how World War II started, controlling media. Was He's he a little bit like the, the dude with the 70 Hemi Charger. Do you remember me painting that? Four times, yeah. I think season five, we did a 70 Charger. And that was one of the first cars I had a hand in when I came back. You know, it took him four times to paint it. The car looked great. I mean, he did do a good job, but it, I literally had to babysit the whole entire car. Well, you know what? I'll paint it a hundred times. That's what it takes to make it perfect. So I'm not painting the car. God, you know, we always... I need you to promise me you won't paint it. So I've got to be on my game, not only just to paint the car, but to make sure Will doesn't slide in behind me and paints the car when my back is turned. So I've got to get a commitment out of him. I won't paint it, Mark. I mean, fine. No, you have to say it. I won't paint You say it! You effing say it! It's important for me personally to keep my promises and follow through with them all the way. If I give somebody my word, I'm going to stick by that. That's super important to me name of that movie i don't know that that was okay i, I, I know what I, you did last yeah, summer i won't paint when he box. makes I, her say yeah, back that yeah. it's they're going to keep it amongst themselves right and she nods her head like you just did and then he grabs her by the throat you say it julie you say yeah. it okay <laughs> i won't paint the car well this is going to be a pretty quiet week at graveyard cars Alyssa is down at disneyland she took her kids my grandkids down there along with her boyfriend apparently with Alyssa, you know she gets the new title i give her some osha work she runs through here, ruffling out a bunch of feathers, and then she goes on vacation for two weeks while we're building the SEMA car. So she's gone, we gotta still build the car. Then she's gonna come back, be disappointed the car's not done, 
and then basically go on another vacation down to Vegas for a week. Mark doesn't answer anybody's calls. If he had to stop for every phone call, he would really be of no help out here. Yeah, make sure when you guys are filming or whatever you do, you guys capture his ringtone. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. Every person calls with any question, they have to understand that that's what's getting played on Mark's end. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. Thanks. What's happening? Stupidity. What? Oh, Tony trying to get hold of me. It's the birthday thing. It's the birthday thing. So today's my birthday, right? No big deal, right? I'm 57 years old. I'm still spring chicken. I've ruined friendships over those happy birthday gags. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't get birthday weirdness. Nobody wants it. Nobody's interested well, it's in better. it. At least you're having a birthday. Birthdays are great. Well, it beats the alternative, but right. why does anybody need... Nobody celebrates the day you died, right? Actually, they have a celebration of life, yeah. Do they? Yeah. Well, that's weird, too. I understand it's a courtesy. I get it, but it's not my thing. You don't call people and say, hey, I'm glad to hear your dad died. Just, just, just everybody just, leave me alone. Everybody can just leave me alone it, today. Boss. I don't, I'm not sure what his deal is with birthdays. I'm not sure now that he's 65, what happened. I don't know if it's his age or, or what's going on, but he's just not a fan of him now. Uh, my name's uh, Josh Laughlin. I work here at uh, Graveyard Cars doing all the mud work and Bondo. So the thing about the body and paint world, never have I ever had one person come up and say, hey, who did the body and prep work on that car before it got painted? <laughs> Nobody cares. That guy, he's the unsung hero. So Mark decided to come out and show me more of what I already know. There's a particular area here on Challengers, right through here, that is supposed to look a certain way. And if you're not familiar with it, it's easy just to block that out where it's flat, when in reality, it should have a real slight dish right there. So you have to maintain that little bit of a dish. Uh, this being Tony's car, there's a tendency to stress about a little bit more of the details when you have to possibly see that person more often. Tony had been wanting to buy a car for his wife and Tony wanted to wait and find the right one. So an air-conditioned 440RT plum crazy car is perfect for her. She loves the Challenger, she loves the color, so that's why he made the deal with me. If you just make a pass through there, like that, you can see I hit the high spot here and then if I go over here, you can see another high spot because here's my scratches. So in the case of Tony's car, there's a couple of areas on the Dodge Challenger, and I've done many of these, that I know are tricky. And you want to fill in this one low area because your brain tells you it should be, but, it, but it's not supposed to be. I've been doing it for a while, but you know, sometimes you have to indulge the boss and let him uh, do what he feels he needs to do. And plus I get a little bit of free work out of it. Right through this area, you can tell the paper didn't touch it. That's why I like my flexible block. In some ways, I have good teaching skills because I, I really break things down to a rudimentary level. If you look at that block, I can take that thing and flex it like that so that it'll go down in that area. I can flex it like that. I can put a twist in it. Easy to understand, no insider jargon stuff. Twist it, flex it, bow it, whatever. Do you use this so much? Nope. Huh. Huh. Interesting. I really like the blocks that I use, and I've used them long enough that they're just comfortable. So that one is uh, Will's. This is Will's. Yeah. Oh, you don't have one here, I do not. I'm have gonna one. buy you one. This is a Hutchins. These are really, really nice. Well, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah you bet. Uh, it's humorous at times, and other times it's a little in the way. But he does run the, the show, so. Is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. So Tony's persistent. He is a friend. We've really formed a great friendship. But he drives me crazy. It's that, it's that East Coast craziness that they just can't... Like out here, we're laid back. That's why people came out to the West Coast. Okay, I'm getting close to being finished with the top half of the quarter. Sometimes I end up just doing it myself. I get into showing them how to do it, and I think, well, gosh, it's only a couple of more passes, you know, and it'll be exactly where I want it. And that area right there is now ready for primer, as is the top half of this. Yeah, I probably need to step back a little bit. You're welcome to go ahead and... Continue on. I can go I've ahead done and my job. It off. You can officially go crazy and get these camera guys out of here. When I paint it, somebody will come up and say, Hey, who painted that car? I did. I won't give them any glory for the guys that prepped it because that's what double standards are. Don't put the double standards because people at home don't appreciate that kind of stuff.
Michael. There's Michael on his phone, doesn't hear nothing, doesn't pay attention to anything. So you gotta grab him early, get him going in a direction quick, otherwise you kinda lose him for the whole day. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your busy day. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you to be standing there doing nothing. Okay, so I think first thing this morning, mm -hmm. I want you to get going on this, get that metal all detailed out, mm -hmm. um, masked up in the booth, seam seal it, and then we get this painted, and then we can get it out to the bondo room. Okay. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay. So I heard it was Mark's birthday. Is what it? What are we doing? We don't, we, don't, we don't celebrate his birthday. Why not? Mark's not a fan of anybody acknowledging his birthday. I appreciate what Michael wants to do because he is still new here. He doesn't like it. He gets older, like, probably like 60. 60? He's probably pushing 60 now. He's not a fan, so we've kind of always just kind of stayed, stayed away from doing anything for his birthday. We should do a prank or something then. Something fun. It's literally not in the best interest of some, have a new hire coming up and saying, hey, let's pull a prank on Mark because of his birthday. For Mark, I don't know. It'd be interesting. See his reaction. You are the new guy. So we can do it. And then if we do it and he doesn't yeah. like it, you'll just take the rap for it? Nice, great. Sure. No, okay, good. Sure. Well, of course I encourage that behavior. It's funny when somebody else gets in trouble and it's not my fault. So let's get this car done. <laughs> as soon as this car is done, I want to get you suited up. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to primer Tony's car. I don't know anything about primer though. I know you don't know anything about primer because I've seen your truck. <laughs> so I get it. But we will walk, they're baby steps. This is, you know, you can mask a car up, you can prep mm -hmm. a car really good. Now I get you priming. I want you to get a handle on priming, we'll get you paint. Then I, once you get paint, you're gonna want to go back and fix that crap box truck you drive that you restored. Oh yeah. So let's get, Let's get this done, and then, uh, yeah, get it in the booth, and we'll do Tony's car. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, Dale's called a meeting. I don't know what it's about, but in a rare twist, he will actually be there, because Mark isn't. Good morning, everybody. I don't mean to interrupt, is this gonna be a long meeting? Because I didn't quite plan properly, and I'm already out. No, it won't be very long. I just wanted to let you guys know that this week is Mark's birthday. Um, oh, crap. The, I completely spaced what time of year this was. This is the wonderful, wonderful time of year where we all get together and work very hard to torture Mark with a happy birthday video. How old is Mark? So for a number of years, Mark claimed that he was 39. And then at some point he started claiming he was 49. I think there was like a 10 year buffer. So I don't know if we do the math, I think maybe he's like 56. Yeah, something like that. Mark hates birthdays. I don't know. He hates uh, other people's birthdays because that usually involves them being celebratory and uh, maybe taking time off work, which he finds to be somehow offensive. The camera crew's gonna be coming around because I asked them to uh, come around to you guys and get birthday wishes for you guys. Uh, and then the priority this week is for you guys to edit that video together so we can get it together on social media. Yeah. Didn't somebody get fired for making a big deal out of Mark's birthday once? That's irrelevant. Um, it's kind of a, it's a tradition around here. Right, Aaron? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a tradition like Holly. Christmas. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is the thing that you use at Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. So DL likes to say that producing a show like ours is tantamount to lifting bricks in an otherwise smooth road and waiting for somebody to come along and trip over it. Isn't it a tradition that Mark hates these videos with a burning passion? Exactly. Mark's birthday is quite possibly DL's favorite brick. Except, possibly, Tony D'Agostino. Contrary to popular belief, I still work on these cars every single day. As a matter of fact, I was out putting parts in the Aladdin parts washer. It's the camera creep, stalking me. I talked to the district attorney, that's stalking. I'm gonna be, have you brought up stalking charges. What do you think of that? Attempting to reach you on your cellular device. And I get a phone call from Brian. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. An idiot. Hey, B. Working, same thing you're supposed to be doing. Now, Brian's the guy that owns a 1970 Challenger RTSE. This is the green one that Tony and I uh, did a validation on a couple of years ago. Look, you know I love you, I'll do anything. It's just 
honestly, it's just dumb to, to invest any money. I, I don't I don't dodge his call. Number one, he's a customer. You shouldn't dodge your customers. Number two is he has no idea it's my birthday, so I know I'm safe there. And three is he has three cars here. One is the 1970 Dodge Challenger 440 six pack, four speed, super track pack, 40,000 mile original car, but it's unrestored, very worthy of the restoration. The other one is more of a passion for him because he had it when he was younger. I get it, right? I'd probably pay whatever I had for my old 70 Charger back. It's not a six pack car, it's not a Hemi car, it's not even a 440, it's not even an RT. I know it means something to you and I'm, I'm not trying to disrespect that, I get it. But you're gonna have $100,000 in a car that's worth 30 when you're done, maybe 40. The car is rotten, it's not worth doing. I, I don't wanna be a butt and say we're not gonna do it, but at the end of the day, he's gonna have more in that one than he will a six pack car. <laughs> I'm not confused. I know the difference between the six pack car and that one, yeah. Part of my job, is to indulge my clients. You know, they need it sometimes. In Brian's case, he thought somehow I confused the only car that won't stand up under its own power here at the shop with some other car. Sure, because I could have him confused, absolutely. Would you like me to take a picture of me standing next to it holding today's newspaper? The good news is I indulge him. The good news is it gets me away from everybody. All right, I'll let you know, yes, I'll text you. The bad news is this is a heap of dung that's never gonna make it. Happy birthday, Mark Warman. Uh, hope you had a wonderful day. Uh, hopefully all your friends and family were there and it was full of happiness and butterflies and all that happy stuff. No car or no car. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday, Mark. You're getting older, but I'm still here working hard for you, buddy. Hey, what are you feeling? Just checking it out. Okay, well, you should have already checked it out before you mask it up and bring it to the booth. So you know what you're doing? For the most part. Okay, so what don't you know then? Uh, which primer do you want me to use? You should already know this because you've primed before. Uh, I've primed a couple of cars before in the past. One for GYC, one for myself. I think mixing primer on my own will go decent. I kind of remember. It, we have a few different primers, so I, I think that would be the difficult part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So the car blocked out pretty good. Uh -huh. It had a few problem areas. Um, you know, stuff like this here, you obviously, I mean, you're the one that blocked it out. You know there's a low spot here. Mm -hmm. So we, the whole car probably needs two good coats, but in these areas, make sure they get three. All right, All right. sounds Thank good. You. Break. <laughs> Tony's car has come a long ways in a fairly short amount of time, but reason being it was a clean car to start with. I mean, that's, that's a huge, a huge thing when it comes to how quickly we can turn these cars out. Last time Tony was here, we had the body work almost done. Get some primer here. That's not shaking. Ah, <laughs> oh, <dirty laughs> <shit. laughs> I'm not starting that. Where is? Black well, doesn't have a lot of experience yet but it is important to me because I think he's going to be around here for the long haul. So if I can get him priming, get him jamming parts, that's just less little stuff that I have to stop doing. Hey, why did you set me up for failure? With what? There's no mixed primer. Well, I would, I'm not gonna mix your primer for you. Michael really doesn't know much about primer and that's okay. I'm gonna use this opportunity to teach him. But my teaching is a lot like Mark's. I'm gonna set him up to fail, make him look silly. So when he goes to primer next time, he's gonna think like, God, that didn't go so well. I really better pay attention to what I'm doing. That way you only have to show him once. Yeah, I don't mind. You know what, I don't mind. I'll indulge him all you want. You're, you're coming out here too. Freezing cold out here. I gotta go out and stand in the back row of the graveyard and find out whether or not this car is the one I'm remembering. It's ridiculous. See all those cars? Show him all those cars. Tell them, come on down the line, right down here. Here you go, keep on coming down. I know exactly where we're at. Yeah, I enjoy going out back when nobody's out here. Nobody's there, nobody's gonna bug me about my birthday. I can do my job in peace and quiet, tranquility. Stand in front of it, give them a POV, they call it in the business, of that car right there. Now, while you're on that, let me show you a couple of things. You see how there's no fender left here? That's the fender that I'm curling up right there. See this fender? No problem. They make new fenders. See the rot down in there? That's a problem. 
See how the convertible top sets really nice and flat? That's great. That's the best. You notice how the car sets about a foot down below that? Because there's no torsion bar cross member in it. No rocker panels left. No frame rails. No front floor pan. No rear floor pan. No inner and outer wheelhouses. No trunk floor. Trunk floor extensions. Quarter panels. You name it, it's gone. Hinge pillars, A pillars, B pillars, all rotten. There is nothing left. See the seat that's setting all crooked in there? That's because it doesn't have anything to bolt to. Take a look at that floor. You like that floor? Can you see that? That's rotten. Okay. Take a look here. All this rot. There's nothing left. Nothing. You see the door here? I go to try to close the door. It's a foot lower than the quarter panel. Why? Because there's no A-pillar. There's no hinge pillar left on it. By the time we were done restoring this car, the only thing we would use is a section of the convertible top frame. That's why it's garbage. That's why it's not worth doing. Not because I don't like it. I think it'd be a great car. Purple with a white top, white guts, 318 automatic. Be a great car. But there's, it's not a car anymore. It's a parts donor. That's all it is, is a parts donor, and not many of those. You know, anybody that's been watching the show or even knows me for the last 20 years knows that I love the cars. I love the brand Mopar, which is probably why I'm the only ambassador for Mopar. When a car leaves here, I just want to make sure that at least the spirit of the original car is there. Taking a car and starting with nothing but a piece of windshield trim and a convertible top mechanism isn't anything in the spirit of the original car. It's just a, it's a bad formula in my book. So what I gotta do now is call the guy up, tell him I didn't hallucinate, send him a picture of the car out here in the freezing rain, which my arms are in freezing rain too. I'll get one here that shows how nice and level the car sets. All right, there we go, uh-huh. Let me send him that text that I didn't have it confused. He's thinking his other car is this car which I would pay $50,000 for right now what you see. This is a numbers matching 446 pack, four speed Dana Super Track pack. Original plum crazy car. All original numbers matching engine, transmission, rear end, factory fender tag. He has the broadcast sheet for everything. This is a really, really nice car, right down to the 2998 956 radiator. My dream someday is to have a little miniature graveyard cars. Nobody around for miles, right? Just peace, love, and joy. That car in no way could ever be confused with that car. An the only idiot person that's is attempting confused to is reach him you on your cellular device. And that would be him calling out. An idiot. Happiness. That's what I want. Uh, Michael came to us with minimal experience, but he has held a paint gun. Um, yeah, that's about the extent of it. Uh, so we're kind of just having to walk through the process because priming cars, it may look easy when someone who's been doing it for years can just go in and do it. But there is a process just mixing the paint right, uh, mixing the primer right, and actually there is a certain way to apply it. So I have him just priming as much as possible because the longer a gun is in his hand, the better off he'll be and the quicker he'll get. You get it mixed up? I believe so. We'll quickly check my product. I didn't really set him up for failure. I just showed him what to do like a month ago and said, go do it again. That's not setting him up for failure. I'm just, I've showed you once. You should have it down by now. What'd you reduce it with? The reducer. Oh, is that how we're doing it now? Uh, which one am I supposed to use? Still the acetone. He screwed up everything. He didn't know what to reduce it with, acetone or reducer. Go back to Facebook and see that monkey. See if he's like looking for a work. Monkey, if you're watching this, you call me. I need a helper. So yeah, this is no good now. You can't reduce that. Oh. So yeah, that's garbage. Uh, so you need to use the acetone, remember? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, so you can toss that. Sweet. It's not hard to mix primary, but he's kind of like uh, Drew Barrymore from 51st States. So you talk to him and he's good that day. And then he falls asleep. And the next day, it's like a whole new day. So you almost have to start over again. So the process is a little bit longer than like a normal human, but we're definitely working through it. So can you remember all these steps? I think so. Because you had to come get me. <laughs> and then when you came and got me, you wanted the pre-mixed primer, which there's no such thing. Minstered. And then you used reducer instead of acetone. <laughs> yeah. So you got a good handle on this now? Yeah. He primered it. He looks silly on TV doing it but he learned from it. 
So next time he goes to Primer, he's like, I made such a out of myself on TV, I really gotta pay attention. So moving forward, we're good. Okay, so this looks good. Get your paint suit on and then get that spray in and I'll check it on you periodically. All right, sweet. This is a great car. You get them acclimated with how to primer, what it needs to look like, air pressure, safety procedures, all of that, so we can start moving forward in this training. All in all, Michael's by far the best helper I've had. I give him a ton of crap. He does a great job and he's still learning. Coming in here and priming on days like this is great experience because the more he primers, that's more gun time in his hand. So when it comes time to doing like pre-paint, jamming parts, he'll be more experienced and actually be able to do it quicker than other helpers I've had in the past. After 10 years of being 39, uh, happy 49th birthday, which will be for another 10 years, I think. Yeah, I think you're in your sixth year of being 49 now. So, happy 49th birthday. Hey Mark, happy birthday. Just want to say thank you for everything you've done. Hope, hope the day's great. So all I'm doing right now is just ordering up some final accessory pieces from Mopar. So on Christine, we've got about 40 days before the show, so that's not a lot of time when you consider the fact that you're looking at a raw frame with an engine mounted into it. I've got to get a belt. I just realized I don't have the tensioner. It's one of the things that goes on. And a body that does fit, that's the good news. We tested it and made sure that it fit like it was supposed to so we can continue on. But that's still a pretty short deadline. Oh, actually, I apologize. I do have the tensioner. Ha ha! Awesome, all right. See, it's a good day today at Gravy Land. This is the Helifant engine. This is the, to date, right now as I'm sitting here doing this interview for Graveyard Cars, it is the only Helifant engine that's been produced. Mopar supplies us with everything we need, but they didn't know we were adding air conditioning to it. So this would have worked great with the factory power steering pulley and the alternator pulley and the idler pulley and the crank. But since we added air, that's a completely different package. So that just needs a different belt on it. This engine produces 1,000 horsepower and 950 foot-pounds of torque. It runs on pump gas. Doesn't need race fuel. Runs on pump gas. So I just have to run this route through the routing. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. This is one of those days that you just want to be over. The whole birthday thing's just played out, right? There it is. An idiot is attempting Not gonna to stop. You Doesn't understand. Birthday, Tony, calling to torture. Doesn't care, doesn't care. I told him before I don't want anything to do with it. Everybody knows that. Tony, 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 every second, Tony, Tony, Tony. Well, you know what, now it's a game. And I know they're just being polite, but that's not the point. The point is, if you didn't, if there was something about you that you didn't like, I wouldn't just hone in, well, I would hone in on it and make fun of you, but that's part of my shtick too, you know? I'm a, you know, I'm a comedian, so. I know what he wants, and I ain't playing, right? You wanna play catch the mark? I'll, I'll play hide from the tone. That's fine. 62 inches, all right. So I'm gonna order up a belt for it. This one was just a little bit too short. Then I've gotta order the fuel lines for it. Uh, Ron is helping me out with the fuel lines and the uh, fittings, Ron from Magnum Force. Holly is setting me up with the incredible fuel pump that requires 40 billion gallons an hour. I don't know what it is, but it uses a half inch feed line to it. This thing is a beast, it's thirsty. So I'm just gonna keep plugging away, getting all the plumbing done to it. I still gotta get the radiator built. Meanwhile, the body's over there getting painted and, or in the process of getting ready for paint. Hopefully we make our deadline and get her done. Ain't no birthday at SEMA, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't care, I don't get to go up on stage. And, oh, Mark, tell us all about your car. Well, I can't because I didn't finish it because it was my birthday, I took it off. See what I'm getting at? It's just another day. An yep, there it is. For the love of it. Uh, hello, Mark. Happy birthday. Happy 56 or 7 or uh, 60 or whatever, whatever it is. I'm going to head into the reference room, sit down, bring up the FC7, uh, Plum Crazy and Violet see what toners it takes to make it to where I can just make it on my own, or do I actually need to call our paint distribution company and have them just send me a few gallons of it? You know, it's a pretty simple task. It's just a, like I said, just a matter of 
looking to see if we have all the materials here to make it. We have enough to do smaller jobs, but when you're doing a complete like this, a lot of times I don't have enough toners. <clears throat> I'm not sure how they did it exactly back in the day, what their procedures were. But now, 2019, it's pretty easy. We just gotta bring up the color, get a hold of our supplier, then they send it all out. But yeah, Tony's great. You know, he's not quite the uh, purist he says he is. You know, with the fact he wants everything cut and buffed, looking 10 times better than the way the car came out from factory. But we do have a couple of clients that don't want their cars buffed out and want it to look, you know, the way, the way it did original. But I look forward to seeing Tony so we can actually have this conversation and give him crap about it. Speak of the devil. Number one painter here. Hey, what's happening, Tony? Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. Oh, you are? Hey, Mark, just want to wish you a happy birthday and I uh, want to wish you the best. Yep. Thank you. It's very nice. I appreciate it. 40s. That's all we got to know. In my 40s. We've gone through everything uh, pretty detailed with what Mark wants. You know, getting it primered, blocked out, masked up in the booth. But the one thing he does not want me to do is get it painted. Okay. No, I appreciate it. That's, that's very nice of you. <laughs> I'm glad you remember, man. All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs> the guy spent as much time worrying about my parts as he does me turning another year older. We probably have some cars out of here. 40s? <laughs> How can I help you? Why are you darkening my doorway? Where are you spraying Tony's car? Whenever I spray Tony's car. I don't, th I don't think that... So there's no straight answers out of you. Oh yeah, that's a straight answer. You don't know? Why don't you walk up to Hank Ford and say, hey Hank, when are you gonna invent the Model T? He invents it when he invents it. It's super difficult to get a straight answer out of Mark. Um, it's very time consuming and very taxing and very exhausting. I'd rather not do it. Hey Jesus, when are you gonna raise Lazarus from the dead? He raises him when he raises him. What, what I wanna make sure is, did you order the paint? Yes, we have the paint, we're ready to go. PPG. When are you spraying? Deltron. DBC 2210, yeah. plum crazy. Okay. So we have you, lots of the 2021 clear? Yeah, we just, when are you spraying the car? I don't know when I'm gonna paint it, all right? When am I gonna finish the body work on Christine? When am I gonna finish the body work on the 66 Hemi Charger? When am I gonna finish the body work and help the guys align the sheet metal on the Hemi Roadrunner? When am I gonna do all these things? Well, why is it important to know when the Challenger's gonna be painted? I mean, it's really, really not. It's not that big of a deal when the car gets painted. Tony who? This is Mark's thing, not mine. What? When am I going to write my articles for uh, Mopar Performance? When am I going to write my articles for Mopar Muscle Magazine? So when am I going to star in a world globally sensational television show? Yes, you know, dealing with you on your birthday is the worst. It's, it's just another day. See, as soon as you guys realize that, now I know you like to take a celebration, go down and have the entire Crescent City town shut down for you, okay. right? Because it's your birthday. It's our birthday. We're going to Dimmyland. Well, I never got to go to Dimmyland, all right? I love it that he gets worked up over the birthday thing. I think, actually, next year, I'm gonna get on my social media and announce it to everybody when his birthday is with his cell number. Because I would love nothing more than every August when that birthday rolls around, he is on the phone ignoring phone calls for the whole day. I don't care about birthdays. I've never taken one off. I'm a businessman. I work. So you got Okay, good talk. Take care of business. So you're gonna spray the car? Killing is my business, ladies. I know, and business is good. And been there. I know. I know. Good. Major pain. Damon Wayans. <coughs> yeah. This Mark Graveyard Cars. You know what today is? No. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy. Happy birthday. Happy. Happy birthday, Mark. Cut. Hey, Mark. Wanted to say happy birthday. Thanks for the opportunity to be part of the team and really looking forward to being here for the long haul. Okay, so I'm just building a fuel protector for the uh, Christine. The half inch fuel line that's gonna run down the frame rail, you won't want that exposed. When it comes to hand forming something that's 
very important to have some metal shaping equipment like the, the ball A stuff, it's, it's phenomenal. It's because if something were to happen, have a, uh, like a rock fly up and hit it, it could cause a leak in it, and if it had caused a leak in it, then you'd have a real problem because you're either not running or you're on you fire. On your cellular device. And I've an been down that road before. To you yeah, for Tony, it's a game because he's sitting there at a desk. He has nothing else to do all day long except once I say I'm not going to answer that phone, he, he senses that, he's just going to blow up my phone over and over and over again. Well, it's fine. The harder he pushes, the more defiant I'll be. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. This is a cool machine. I mean, I love it. Because <laughs> used to be we had to cut these off with a cutoff wheel. But if we ever did custom manufacturing where you're actually doing a lot of stuff, this would be a perfect unit for it. They look nice, clean cut. I need a break at about one inch right here. So I'll just go down to my break. So when you're talking about like Christine, the 58 Plymouth Fury, there's no parts available for these. So when you have equipment like that, it fills the void. Right about there. Lock that down, lock that down. I found floors used. I found trunk floor used. But all the pieces in between that and all the pieces that we don't have on Christine, it's gonna be really nice to go over to the ballet and just start hand shaping it and making it fit like, like it has to do because we have no time to do it twice. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. And now I got my perfect break. An idiot is That'll go up inside the car. Shields will run down through here. This is the little extension piece that I needed, and I got it. I'm not gonna answer it. I don't have to answer it, all right? I am in charge of my own destiny. And if it means ignoring Philly steak, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. He may not like it, but that doesn't change the fact. I have a plan. Hey Mark, I heard it was your birthday and I just wanted to say happy birthday and thanks for the paycheck. So I just got a text in from Tony and it says, call me emergency, gotta talk now. So I feel safe that I can answer the phone and I know he would never do anything to compromise our he knows how I feel about the other stuff, the birthday and all that. So, yeah, I need to answer it. Hey, Tone, how you doing, man? Good, good. Yeah. Thanks, man, that's nice. Thank you. So he got me. That's what he does. That's what Tony does. He, 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 it's, it's like the Ollie thing. Remember the rope-a-dope? You let the guy sit there and swing and swing and swing until he's exhausted, and then he drops his defense, and you come in with a haymaker. That's what he did. Happy birthday, Mark. Yep. Okay. Okay. You know what? I like Tony. I'll accept it. It is what it is. He did, however, manage to ruin my entire rest of my life with what he said next. Today it's chicken and potatoes. Happy birthday, Mark. It's, it's morning, right? I can say good morning. Good morning, Mark. I just woke up. I heard it's your birthday today. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> Been working on a little script for a uh, feature film. Been working on Will's wanting a minute of my time. There he is right there. Hello, Willie. What's happening? How are you? Good. Looks like you put a little weight on since things have calmed down at the house. Getting settled into the big family scene. I did the same thing. I gained a lot of weight when I first got married and had kids, so it happens. So I I talked to Tony. Yeah, so did I, unfortunately. What he said was he's coming out. Flying out. Next month? No. Next week? No. He's going to be here tomorrow. Tony's going to be here tomorrow, and the problem with that is he's going to expect that car to have been painted. He tell you he's coming out? Yeah. As in, like, tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. I wanted to have the car painted when he got here. That was what I gave him my word mm -hmm. that I would do. Right. And it just isn't happening. So you know what? It's your fault. How is it my fault? Well, because you know I need reminders. You know I'm going Mach 6 with my hair on fire, all right? What's left? It's, it's fine. All I know is when he gets here, we'll just tell him the truth. Perfection takes time, all right? And that is the fact. I mean, you had, it's been there for what, three or four days? I haven't had a chance to do it. I'm sorry. It's okay. All right? Lo siento. Spanish descent. Lo siento. But, uh, the important thing, come out here for a second. 
No, I don't need to come out there for a second. Come on. This is a great example of how I keep my promises. I just ask my first ex-wife and my second. When you work at Graveyard Cars, we have a code. Like, you saw a few good men. I don't mean naked. The movie. So the code is, if you make a promise to somebody here, you keep it. Not everybody honors the code. Try some, buy some, fee fi fo fum tuck. This particular case, not only did he break the code, which normally would very much upset me, but he actually did a pretty good job on the car. That fit looks really good. I know. I actually had to show the body man how to block these areas. Oh, earlier. that one little spot, that does get No, there's good. no little spot. I didn't, I said little spot. Wow, wow. It's actually nice and flat, look at that. So you're happy? That well, I hang it. on, I didn't say I was happy. Well, then I broke the promise. It's pre-paint, that's why you didn't do your seam seal yet? Yeah, it's all the normal stuff. How many stuff? coats I, of the DBC 2210 did it it's take? It's all the normal stuff. How many coats did it take? It, st it still takes a standard five. It looks real nice. I know. Let me look at that Dutchman, hang on here, hang on. Now, that's just a precursory look. When Blubber gets out, when Tony gets out here and takes a look at this car and sees anything wrong with it, I'm off the hook. I didn't do it. You got something wrong with it? Go see Will, go see the Promise Breaker. You know what? Thank you. That's very nice. That's awesome. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I broke a it. promise, but... You broke a promise, but it's okay, yes. because in this particular case, Blubber is going to have a great time out here when he sees his car, because Tony is going to really like seeing this. And I don't even care about Tony. I care about his wife. She's a saint. She should have a medal for being with so that. So you're guy. happy? I'm very happy. Okay. Well, happy birthday. Have you birthday. ever talked to... Happy birthday. Wow. Well, I went and did it for you for your birthday, got it done. Stupid. Why do you say birthday? Nobody cares about birthdays. You did it because it was a responsibility. Yeah, it was your birthday. All right? Happy birthday. Just like me, I don't want to hear birthday anymore. You don't understand. It's been a great week. Even though I had to spray the car and break a promise, the end result, the car got done. Michael did a good job. We got things moving out here, and everybody's happy. I'm not happy about birthdays. I mean, it beats the alternative. That. I'm happy about that, but that ain't a birthday. Yeah, it is. Just wanted to say, even though I know you do not like it, happy birthday to the second greatest painter in the world. Hope it's a good one. Happy birthday, Mark. Appreciate working here. Thank you. Happy birthday, Mark. Good morning, Mark. I just woke up. I just heard it's your birthday today. Oh, man. Sorry. Well, at least I, I did remember, though. So anyway. Did you like the video I made for you? Did I like the video you made? Yes, I like the video because there are good people that were involved in it. I'm not thrilled at the idea that you broke the code, went behind my back, and you know what I'm talking about. Well, I got one more surprise for you. And what pray tell is that surprise? Adios. T, what's up, dog? How are you? Well, good to see good you. To see. How are you doing, bro? Good, good. Just got, got in. You leaving? Why? Let's I go. mean, it's good to see you. <laughs> Let, let's go catch dinner. God, immediately? I see. Well, you you're for eight leaving. Seconds? Well, you're leaving. You don't want to stay here anymore? Do you want to stay? I was home? going home. Yeah, but oh. I'd much rather go out to dinner with you. Well, there you go. Great. Yeah. <laughs> How you been? Good. 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 Is that a could over there in that yard? I don't have my glasses on, but. Where? Like between? Yeah, right over there. 